So basically we have a couple of annotations from JPA to, to do that. The first one that we need is the entity. So each table in the database will represent an entity, right? Um, the, the second thing that we need is each table in the database uh, must be, each, each record must be, uh, it must have an identifier, it must be unique. So we need to tell to the database uh, which, which is the ID is going to be. So let's write here the ID annotation. But every time, every time that we are going to create a new entity, uh, we will need a way to create a, a new ID which is unique. So there is a couple of ways to do that, but uh, I will choose uh, the sequence way, which is a special type or kind of tables that only holds like a counter. To do that, let's write a sequence generator and I will need a couple of arguments right here. So since in Kotlin we don't have the um, static types, uh, we will need to use something that is called companion object, which is basically the same as static in Java and this will create a singleton object inside of the person. Uh, so let's write here a uh, const um, person sequence of type string and the name will be just person sequence. Okay, so let's go back to our sequence generator and the name is how this is going to uh, be named in the in our application. So how how is going to be referenced? So let's use the person sequence. Then we have the sequence name. This is the name of the sequence in the database. So let's use the same name just to keep it simple. Um, the init value will be one, and um, this is how uh, how much do you want to hold in each call to the database uh, the default value here is is 50 I believe yeah but if someone goes to the database and create an insert uh, by itself it, it could lend you to a problem so let's just put a one here um, and that's it. That is everything that we need for the entity for now, at least. If you want to change, uh, let's say that the table has some column that doesn't match to the attribute name, of course that you can use the column annotation and then specify the name of the uh, table column, right? So let's keep it uh, simple for now. So uh, let's see, we have our entity, we have our, our DAO layer, we have our DTOs, we have our service, which is holds all the business information, we have our transformer even with the transformer or the extension, and let's create some resource, just like we did in the beginning with the REST controller. So let's create another package called resource. And once again, let's create a new interface. Let's put something like person resource. And once again, we will need, uh, just let me uh, maybe copy this, but let's, let's change the response and we will see in a moment why we will change this response. Let's put here a res uh, entity response or response entity 
response NTD uh, with a wrapper and I will tell you in a moment why we are doing this so just let uh, change all this we will have define all uh, the save once again response entity and the update with response entity and of course the delete will be as well a uh, response entity but of the unit uh, wrapper type so basically the response entity is an object from the spring framework that allows you to uh, modify the HTTP code, uh, body, headers and so on so it's a good practice to use this, this object in the controller so let's create an implementation of this uh, and let's implement all the methods right here so once again let's create a companion object to put here all the uh, basic information that we will need in like like a singleton object so let's write here uh, the path that we are going to use uh, let's put something like base person URL of type string and let's put something like API slash v1 slash person uh, let add an annotation here rest controller let's uh, let's use another one which is request mapping this will tell to the framework okay I will to specify uh, where is going to be this rest API which is the, the path so let's use a uh, value and this this is going to be an array so I have to use this and put here the the base um, the base person URL right over here let's import this because it's from the companion object which is a singleton and we will need to use here our service layer so let's put here person management service and here I'm, I'm reference to the interface and not by the implementation itself because maybe you could have multiple implementation and you must choose one but all the implementation must uh, respect the same contract so by doing this uh, you are in a safe way ensuring that the you are using just the contract so let's write the um, find by ID which is basically let's create a person respond here um, which is person management service dot find by ID and we need this ID but uh, we need to tell to the framework from where uh, he could find the ID so let's put here a path variable this, this means that that ID it will come from the path URL and to do that this is the syntax right so every time that someone puts something like API slash b1 slash person slash for instance a file this file will be the ID to this request and then we create uh, we call to our service uh, we have the response right over here and now we will need a response entity so let's write um, um, an OK maybe uh, remember that you can put here the the person response the type of the return um, you can use a status as well and put here uh, the status that you want maybe just an OK uh, this is a HTTP 200 and the body will be the person response and that's it we have our uh, response right here uh, let's move on with define all we can 
do that just in one line if you want with um, response entity that okay which is the same uh, as this just a builder and here let's put something like person management service that find all um, for the save of course that we need here the get mapping as well because we want to be able to do that by the get method uh, let's put all the annotation for the HTTP methods this will gonna be a pod post sorry this will be the put method uh, and the delete will be a delete mapping so uh, for those requests that the object is in the body we will need an extra annotation which is a request body to tell to the framework that this object is in the request body uh, same for the update and for the delete by id we are going to pass the id from the bad variable so let's add here once again um, the id right so for the save uh, we are not going to return a http 200 we are going to return a http 201 which means create so let's do um, let's create a person respond here once again which is person management service dot save let pass our person request and then let's create a response entity of create uh, look that we will need a your your and URI uh, first which is just a extra header with the URI, with the URI for this particular person so let's write something like URI dot create from the string and let's put the base person URL plus the person ID and why I'm doing this this is because um, let me put here a, a slash and then the person response that ID because this URL will match with this and then and this is for the header and we will need a body which is person response and that's it for, for the save uh, let's write the update which is just response entity that okay and here we call our service layer person management service that update update person request and that's it and last but not least let's write our uh, delete uh, let's call for the, the service service layer delete by ID and then let's return an entity but with the non, no content um, HTTP code so I think we that we have the our resource so let's execute everything and see what happened